say, Dublin can be quite busy, quite noisy, a little hectic. So 30, 35 minutes on a train gets you to this really nice, quiet little village. Go for a walk along the water. There's a great seawall here. Uh, nice coffee shops, good restaurants. Really nice spot to get away for an afternoon or even spend the day because you can go for a walk all the way around the island and I believe that's a couple of hours worth. So it can definitely make a day of it or half day, whatever works for you. Hoth's name has Viking origins and comes from the Danish word hoved or head. House Harbour was built in 1807 and was at that time the main Dublin harbour for the packet boats from England. House Road was built to ensure rapid transfer of incoming mail and dispatches from the harbour to the city. The English place name Hoth is of Scandinavian origin and dates from approximately the 9th century. It comes from the Norse word hoved, meaning headland, which reflecting its significance on the otherwise low coastline of North Dublin and Meath. The much older Gaelic name for the peninsula, Bin Eder, I probably said that wrong, loosely translates to the hills of Adair in English. The harbour of Hoth did not play a major role in the Easter Rising, but the armed rebellion was made possible here. Sailing in from Germany, writer and Irish nationalist Erskine Childers brought arms on his yacht Asgard for the Irish volunteers. A small plaque near the lighthouse commemorates the Hoth gun running as the event became popularly known. A 15-minute boat ride from Hoth on Dublin's north side lies Ireland's Eye. It's a beautiful, mostly untouched island. The only signs of human activity are the two structures, a Martello Tower and the ruins of a church. Around 700 AD, three monks established Kilmacneeson Church on the island. They were the sons of Nissen, a prince of the royal house of Leinster. They created a holy manuscript copy of the four gospels called the Garland of Hoth, which is now preserved in Trinity College. In the late 9th century, Vikings attacked the island. Then they returned again in the 10th century to destroy Kill Mcneeson uh, Church, which something Vikings do, I guess. Today, boatmen take tourists out to the island to explore the Martello Tower and the remains of the old church. There are a breeding pair of puffins on the island, and you are likely to see gray seals around the area. The cost to go out to the island can vary throughout the day, but usually the boatmen are advertising 20 euro per person or 15 euro for students. If you have the money, it could be a fun little excursion. We haven't done this one yet, but it might be something to check out in the future. aficionado of sparkling water, this stuff from Mayo is the ball. Hands on. We did no. We. Yes. Starting off with a Greek salad and octopuses. We won't say anything about these. They're just good. Followed by some mighty fine fish and chips. Impressions? No impressions. Excellent. Excellent. 
That's just you say excellent. Yeah, and they are. They're fresh. The French fries are homemade, freshly cut. Not much batter on the, the fish, and you're getting a lot of fish for the dollar. Delicious. Pretty stellar. Fish and chips and a Greek salad. What are we paying for all that? It's not too much. It's like twenty one. Uh, Hoth is a really easy, straightforward way to get away from Dublin for a little bit. The dart, there's no transfers. It costs around six euro a person. Uh, takes you right there. Really nice walkabout. There's a trail that goes all the way around the little island. Some gorgeous views. You can look back on Dublin from the far side. Um, highly recommended. And definitely go to Octopussies for fish and chips. Okay, thanks for joining.